Welcome to tonight's webinar, Marketing the Brand You Know Best Yourself. This will be a webinar focused on personal branding. A lot of people know brands such as Dell, Apple, Samsung, Toshiba. This presentation will cover branding yourself to a potential employer. Tonight is October 17, 2016. It is 6.30 p.m. My name is Eeyore Andruk. I'm a career counselor with Berkeley College Online. I've been with Berkeley since June 2016. I'm now in my fifth month at Berkeley College. It is a wonderful, wonderful place to work, wonderful students, wonderful alumni. I work with students and alumni in the fields of justice studies, legal studies, graphic design, and marketing. I bring over 15 years of experience working within public relations and marketing and over a decade of experience interviewing individuals, both telephonically and face-to-face. -face. I've recruited and molded young talent into executives and senior executives, which I'm very proud of, and I've served as a strategic career and communications advisor to many national and international brands. As Berkeley students and alumni know that you have come this far in life and how wonderful it is that you are succeeding in what you want to do and in your career path. You've been given all the tools to succeed individually. Now you're in the driver's seat. All you need to do now is put them to use. It all starts with you. You control your own destiny. Understand that. I go by seven steps to success in marketing oneself. The first step being reviewing your online footprints especially within social media. A good way to start doing this is by ego surfing, which is pretty much Googling yourself and seeing what comes up, seeing what comes up in the images section, seeing what comes up in the search section or the news section. In reviewing your online footprint, know that all of your settings should be set to private, but even though they're set to private, doesn't necessarily mean they're private. Because if you're tagged in someone's photo who isn't set to private, you know, an incriminating photo might come up of you, let's say, if you're out drinking or having a good time and partying. 60% of employers turn to social networks to research job applicants, which is up from 52% last year. 53% of the hiring managers said that they want to see if a candidate has a professional online persona, say for LinkedIn. So those recommendations and those endorsements that you know, you're searching for on LinkedIn, they count. A lot of employers are looking for those. 30% of those people want to see what other people are posting about the candidate. That was in a recent article um, published in uh, Business News Daily this past May. 55% of employers have reconsidered a candidate based on what they find. And 61% um, also, they changed their mind um, with regards to seeing negative information about the candidate. Step two is to identify your audience. Now think, no matter what major you are, no matter who you want to target, everyone's going to be individual, individually different, may it be searching for accounting groups, maybe searching for uh, people who work in the field of justice studies, legal studies, marketing. Who do you want to reach individually? What keeps them up at night? What are they reading? What kind of trends are they following? And what value do you bring to them? As Berkeley graduates and students who are about to graduate, you know, you have all these wonderful classes with these fantastic professors, and you bring, you know, all the future knowledge to them, to their organizations and their companies. What groups or associations are they a part of? Perhaps they're part of the American Accounting Association, maybe the American Marketing Association. Maybe it's a local chapter of ACES for security professionals. And what events are they attending? I'm sure that it's the events from these organizations that I just mentioned, or maybe they're local chamber of commerce events. Where can you rub elbows with them? Step three, becoming a thought leader. We're all individually thought leaders and visionaries, whether we realize it or not. 
in branding ourselves, we must become thought leaders. It's critical to update your LinkedIn profile and keep it up to date constantly. Search and share articles of, of interest on your LinkedIn. Contribute original content online, maybe via a blog, or maybe online via LinkedIn directly. Join associations of interest and be active with them. I get many individuals who tell me that they're a part of a chamber of commerce, they're a part of um, you know, the Public Relations Society of America, a part of a local chapter of, uh, of ACES or some other justice studies or local bar chapter, New Jersey Bar Association chapter, and they're just members. They don't do anything. They don't really get to know anybody. It's, there's really no point in joining these organizations unless you really do something. You have to volunteer your time. Join a committee. Promote yourself amongst these peers. Promote yourself via LinkedIn. Promote yourself when you're at these events. And if, they're, if your audience is so niche, then create your own meetup group of interest. Step four, building a presence. You know, ultimately, you want to be so involved that people know you when you enter a room. When you go to these events, these organizations, get to know people. Get out from behind the computer screen, from behind your phone. Volunteer your talents. Join committees. Actually do work. Don't just join these groups just to become a member. Build a website highlighting your, your capabilities. There are so many website companies out there that are so easy to use. Um, you, know, you can build your own website highlighting your own capabilities, almost like an online resume. Have professional business cards, some kind of leave-behinds created for you, and use them when you're building your presence. Step five, which is probably the most important, is network. Everybody knows LinkedIn. Everybody, almost everybody, should be linking in online with career services professionals, with your professors, with the alumni of Berkeley College, should also be linking in with executives and recruiters at the target companies you want to reach. Link in with your friends. Link in with others in your industry. Be active in LinkedIn groups. Join organizations on LinkedIn. Chime in on trends. Chime in on articles. Write your own articles. Contribute unique content and promote yourself via LinkedIn. I'm always telling people to network face-to-face. -face. People, people always ask me where. There's so many places to network face-to-face. -face. Start at Berkeley. Start at alumni events. Start at the events where that Berkeley holds, job fairs, clubs, um, chamber of commerce events outside of Berkeley, professional associations, like I mentioned earlier, business groups, business incubators, women's groups, ethnic groups, places of worship, professional organizations, and meetups. It's not all about always who's involved in these groups. It's who these people know. The stronger your network, the greater chance of you branding yourself, ultimately. People knowing who you are, people knowing what you have to offer. I touched on this earlier. When you network face-to-face, -face, don't disconnect from your alma mater. Especially Berkeley College has so many wonderful, wonderful events for our alumni for our students. Have coffee with people in, in your industry. Offer to buy them a cup of coffee. Tell them that you want to take them out for 15, 20 minutes. You have to supply the coffee, of course. Pick their brain for a few minutes. See what they have to offer, what kind of insights they have to offer. Learn from them. Again, attend networking events. Don't just join these groups. Attend their events. Become a volunteer. Don't be afraid to give away your time and ability. Maybe you're joining a marketing committee. Maybe you're volunteering to help underprivileged with their taxes during tax season at the library. Volunteer your time. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to you know, step out of your comfort zone. That's where all the action happens. And let people mentor you. You know, Berkeley Career Services is always here for you. We can always coach you and guide you through your uh, self-marketing and your job search. Uh, also, professors are here for you too. When you're at these events, again, shake hands. Maintain eye contact with the people that you meet. Ask questions. 
I can't explain the importance of this. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Ask as many questions as you can. That's the only way you learn. Let these executives, let these recruiters, let these people talk about themselves from these other companies. People love talking about what they do. You know, at this point in time, people, when they work, it's a passion of theirs. So they love to talk about what they do. Tell them something compelling about you, something that's going to, you know, really make you stick out. Like example, you know, my name is John Smith and, you know, I want to get into justice, uh, you know, in, in, into, a, into the justice field or into the legal field. And, you know, I enjoy ballroom dancing on Friday nights, you know, something that really makes you stand out from the rest. And by all means, this is critical. Follow up with these people that you meet. Call them. Email them. Link in with them. Be persistent if they don't call you back. Know that they're busy. But I can't explain the importance of persistence, calling and emailing. Step six is an underlining factor for all of this is, you know, just be yourself. Let your personality shine through. Be confident. Be successful. Be knowledgeable. Be honest. Just be yourself. At the end of the day, nothing can replace face-to-face -face conversation and interactions. Despite the explosion of online endorsements and social media dialogue between individuals and brands, researchers have found that word-of-mouth exchanges and in-depth conversation are still the most influential. That was in USA Today less than five years ago. The time is now to get out from behind the computer screen or behind the screen of your device. Show your personality. Call people on the phone. Don't just email people. Uh, it's, easy for people to, it's easy for people to ignore emails. It's harder for them to ignore phone calls. And again, people are going to see your personality and they're going to love you. They're going to fall in love with you for your personality in addition to what you know. Step seven, it's kind of a whole reboot, reset of everything. Reflect on your brand. Reflect on you as your brand and always be working on it. Always be open to criticisms of it. Is there anything new that appears about you online? Has your target audience changed? You're going to learn that your target audience is constantly changing. How can you take your thought leadership to the next level? What can you do unique? What can, can, what you, what can you contribute that's unique to the world? Are you offering as much as you can to your contacts? Are you constantly staying in touch with your contacts? Is your LinkedIn constantly being updated? Are you promoting yourself via LinkedIn? Are there any new associations you may have learned about that you should be joining? Always be taking notes when you're talking to these thought leaders. Are you doing the best that you can be doing? And the answer should always be yes. I thank you so very much for your time tonight. Again, my name is Eeyore Andruk. If you have any questions about branding yourself, please feel free to email me or call me at any time. Have a great evening, and thank you very much.